as the numismatist, we see amazing coins that bring liberty to life, changing throughout the ages, the artistic ability and national pride in spades. But the gems that I will speak of today are not struck through any mint and are arguably more deeply rooted in America culture than any other coin. This is the hobo nickel, so-called because they were born out of the creative economical wandering of hobos. Clever alteration of the classic buffalo nickel, hobo nickels were individually engraved with the design of the hobo profile on the side with the Indian. Turn it over and multiple images, maybe an animal or some other shape, where the American bison once stood. Hobo nickels, once common throughout the Depression, are now a numismatic rarity. Many of them are extremely sought after coin varieties. Hobo nickels boast an unusual quality that contribute to their uniqueness. Each of them are born of free thinking, free spirited artisans. Rather than being minted in uniform multitude managed by persistent, passionless machines. In every infinitesimal square, every imperceptible nuance, every metallic wisp of hair or gleaming thread of the hobo's cap is a tiny piece of individualist characteristic and personal creativity sealed forever etched into the nickel. Hobo nickels are about as varieties as the people who fashion them. In many cases, family members, friends, a self-portrait, maybe even a sexy capture of a couple lover. Each hobo nickel could take as much as a hundred hours to complete chisels, knives, hammers, and any other object fit for etching was used in the process. Now, altering coins to bear different images has been a practice long before the United States, and it was a favorite fad pre-Civil War days where the love tokens were made. See, lovers would romanticize their money by putting ornate decorative items and personal little messages, maybe a place to go visit. Or maybe they would demonize a dictator whose image was minted on the original coin. See, homeless people, other than the craftsmen, who managed to escape the dark, gray, depressing shades of the Depression, metamorphosized the simple buffalo nickel into a glimmering work of circular art. And they would trade that for a meal or maybe shelter for the night. Public perception of these people were often ridden with negative. The actual hobo didn't recognize themselves as things like bums or tramps, two common names that Americans synonymously thought of when you used the word hobo. See, true hobos were nomadic, gypsy-like, free-spirited characters, giving them names like Knights of the Road, adhered to a formal code of hobo ethics. They worked hard when it was available, they were honest, and they tried to stay out of trouble. To live as a hobo even now is to live anonymously. But one hobo in particular slipped away from the pack and because of his love for nickel carvings, rose to a prominence amongst Hobo Nickel's creators. His name, George Washington Hughes, also known as Bo. Bo was only in his early teens when he decided to take up the life of the road and see where it would carry him. One day, Bo wandered into a hobo village, which was frequently referred to as a jungle. And this is where he encountered a man by the name of Bert. Now, Bert was adept at making crafts. He took young Bo under his wings, and he made him an informal apprentice, and carefully taught him how to carve realistic images into nickel. It was a trade, but more than that, it would grow from mere hobby into a passion of bows. With knife or chisel clenched in one hand and the coin represented in the other, Bo threw himself into protecting this perfect little pat of nickel. Eventually, he became extremely skilled at carving them and was also innovated in the tool and progressed the nature of work. He experimented with new techniques and new design ideas. As the years drifted by and as the depression sunk in, the peak of the hobo nickel was there. He was reaching his zenith. Unfortunately, reaching the zenith as an artist doesn't mean you have a good life. Fifty years later, after a life full of hardships, Bo would succumb to a quiet end. And in 1982, without any fanfare from the recognition of our fellow coin enthusiast, Bo slipped away. What became of him in his final years is something of a mystery to most. But today, one thing's true. 
His hobo nickels are in high demand. The unequaled detail, fine craftsmanship that went into making each distinct nickel an appeal that collectors both alive and well demand. But collectors beware. Modern day imitations known as neobos exist and should be very careful of buying knockoffs, which may have machine generated graphics. Now, don't get me wrong. There's always exceptions and artists around the globe continue to hone their skills in honor of this pastime. Hobo nickels are still alive and well. The modern hobo nickel artist and the original Hobo Nickel Society are dedicated to memorializing the unnoticed creativity of many who want to sustain the popularity of the Hobo Nickel and its uniquely American work of folk art. But the grinning face of Hobo's profile on the nickel serves as a permanent reminder that the Hobo Nickel will be in existence for decades to come. Personally, I've got quite a few. I absolutely love this piece. And since their long forgotten carvers have seemingly spoke through the faces of the coin, one silent proclamation stands. This coin is my legacy. 